Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Um, before I start this vid, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of you guys. We've just gone over the 3,000 subscriber mark for the channel. It's a huge achievement and it's not possible without any of you guys out there. Um, and literally, I just want to say a huge thanks to all of you guys. My channel is quite small and the reception that I've received has been phenomenal to date. Uh, so yeah, absolutely brilliant news and I just wanted to share that with you guys before I start this vid. So at the moment I'm driving my M4 and in this vid I'm going to be talking about the crank hub issue on all the S55 engines. Now does my car have the crank hub issue? Let's talk about that. So as you're aware the F80 M3, the F82 M4s and the convertible F83 etc they've been about now since 2014 and I came across a, a figure the other day uh, I, I can't exactly tell you how many cars were produced but in 2017 two and a half thousand M4s were produced and about 1100 M3s were produced and that was just in one year so they are produced not in like masses but there's quite a lot of M3s and M4s out there on the roads throughout the UK. Now how many of those have actually had a crank hub issue? Now before we go on to the crank hub issue, let's just talk about what the crank hub is in the S55. So where previously the timing of the engine is driven by belts and chains etc. In the S55 from War, I believe it's the timing is based upon a sprocket and I'll throw in a picture of what that looks like now. The design of the sprocket has its flaws apparently. Um, it's not, it's got two sprockets and they can slip at any given time if the car is under hard acceleration or hard downshifts and being driven really, really hard. Now for all of you M3, M4 potential owners out there uh, who are looking to buy an M3, M4, you might be put off by this issue and basically if the crank hub fails, it can result in engine failure and that you know huge bills and your engine might need a complete rebuild so it's a bit like the previous E92 and the E90 M3s where they had the rod bearing issue and that was like preventative maintenance uh, to have those changed at whatever time before the rod went through like the, uh, the cylinder head and bent everything all the valves and you know complete engine failure so it is concerning and it was concerning for me as well when I bought um, my M4 so as I said what causes the crank hub issue to to fail there's a number of things now I've spoken to a lot of BMW specialists uh, whether they are independent or straight from dealerships like the M technicians and an interesting thing was when I went to BMW, like the dealership where I purchased this car from a few months ago, and I spoke to um, the M technician who literally only works on M cars apparently, he basically came across and he said he's not come across any car, any M3, M4 of the F80, F82 generations where it's coming for a crank hub issue. Now they get like so many cars coming in for services and warranty work and what have you but none of those were pointed down to a crank hub issue which obviously then gave me a little bit of confidence in okay you know maybe it's just something that's blown out of proportion he then went on and he pulled out like a log sheet of all the cars that he's serviced or that dealership has serviced through warranty claims and what have you and they came across and they never he didn't really share any information in terms of registration numbers or customer details uh, obviously he'd get done for GDPR if he did but he basically said one car came in and it was tuned to like a state 3 totally decatted running huge power that was the only car that had faults that were leading up to the crank hub now these cars you know the S55 engine even in the M2 compact the power is from about 410 horsepower all the way to about I don't know 460 odd horsepower in the M4 CS yes you got the M4 GTS which is really closer to the 500 but there's probably no the internals are slightly different on that so it gave me a little bit of confidence well okay that car was hugely modified but there's only a small proportion of people that have probably had a complete engine failure that's related to the crank hub issue compared to the number of M3s and M4s that have been built 
So is that like scaremongering that's going on across like the whole forums and the Facebook groups, you know, for people that own one of these cars or are potentially looking to buy one of these? I don't know. But there's obviously a number of fixes that people talk about, you know, like the capture play or a complete, you know, rebuild or a, you know, replacement crank hub. Uh, that's out there, you know, I'm not going to name any companies, but I'm sure you're all aware of the ones I'm kind of talking about Now again, I spoke to BMW about this. I'm like, you know, there is something about this kind of crank hub issue That's going on and whether you know, we should go and look into like replacing one of these and again What BMW have said looks like there's a car that's just broken down Just being sidetracked here. Anyway, so what BMW have said is if your car is under warranty and you haven't modified the car, and that's a key point, if you haven't modified your car, you know, all engine parts are going to be covered under warranty. If you, as soon as you've modified your car with like more power, stage one, you know, remap, whether that's boot mode, which I kind of spoke to them about as well, your warranty is voided. Now that's what something that they said. So if you are looking to obviously go and run higher boost and you're going to run like you know more power out of your car out of your m3s and the m4s and the m2 compacts etc then yes you know you are going to be prone to you know ruining uh, the crank hub and there's going to be more chance of it slipping and you know leading to a complete engine failure and therefore you might then want to go and replace that part with one of those fixes but if you're not going to be looking to run more power and you're going to you know kind of keep your car stock then I don't think you've got anything to worry about and I think that's pretty much what BMW have led me to believe so this car for example my F82 is stock you know it's running the standard 430 horsepower 550 newton meters of torque through its DCT gearbox it's stock my plans for this car I'm not thinking of upgrading the power I think the power on this is plentiful so Hopefully, touch wood, who knows, you know, half a mile down the road, I might have a complete engine failure on the crank up, but hopefully I shouldn't have those issues. Now, if you have had an issue on a stock car, then let me know, drop a comment in the comment section below, and you know, how it was dealt with with BMW, because that's obviously important for pretty much anyone out there that's like, gonna come across this vid. Keep on your side, mate. And another thing that BMW have said is not to go by, and this is again, this is the M technician that said this to me. Um, he basically said, don't go by the computer based servicing that shows, like, you know, service doing like say 15,000 miles. Common sense prevails. It's a high performance car, it's an M car. You should definitely. You know get like the engine oil changed and the filters done every six to seven thousand miles that way you know you are guaranteeing that you are running your car on fresh oil and it's gonna you know maintain a good health throughout its lifetime and that's key as well so another thing that you can do and I've done this is you can take your car into BMW uh, and this will cost you because this is not uh, covered under any warranty or anything like that you can take your car into BMW and they can plug in a computer straight down into the crank area of the car uh, to see if it's slipped or whatever now the crank up has got tolerances it can slip up to a certain point uh, before it throws up like a warning or whatever and it does a pretty good job of shutting off the engine and turning the car into limp mode they will charge you a diagnostic fee for that and the time it all depends on you know what that's gonna be uh, for reference for me it was a couple hundred pound but it was a couple hundred pound for me you know in terms of a peace of mind to to show how much it slipped and for your information it was still well within its tolerances and they kind of said look we won't even say that it slipped because it hasn't and then another thing to note this car is quite a low mileage car it's a two-year-old car and it's done about 7,000 miles now the history of this car which I knew well off when I bought the car and it was my choice and I don't really care what you know people are going to say about this but I welcome the comments this car was a Palmer Sport car which basically meant that it spent four and a half thousand miles off its life up to the point I bought the car on track so when people go and book like say a red letter day or BMW's uh, performance day they would go out in the car like this and thrash it around a track 
BMW again did say to me, again when I was talking about the crank cob issue, they're well aware of the history of this car, hence why I bought it through a approved used car. BMW did say to me is that the car is made to be driven and if you are not going to be modifying the car to extreme, extreme lengths like, you know, pure turbos running, you know, five, over 500 odd horsepower, uh, you shouldn't really have any problems. So I can only go by what they've kind of advised. So in terms of my plans with the car, I'm not thinking of running any additional power. I'm quite happy with the 430 horsepower that it's got. I don't really need to put on like a tune just to, you know, beat the numbers. I think the car with the amount of power that it's got, it can put the power down fairly well, I think. I'm just looking forward to summer because I bought this car pretty much at the wrong time of year. Um, I bought it around October time. I've not really had the chance to really exploit it, but it's given me the right opportunities to kind of drive it in the worst weather possible. So from that point, you know, um, I'm just looking forward to the summer uh, where I can actually, you know, drive the car like the way I want to drive it. Having said that, I have modified the car just slightly for aesthetics more than anything. So I've obviously had the car lowered and spaced and I think it looks pretty good on the 20 mil drop and the 12 and 15 um, spacers. I finally, like pretty much most M cars out there, I finally put on the spoiler which it just changes the whole dynamics of the car from the rear end. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Uh, I've smoked out the rear lights as well, which you know just give you that extra little bit of like street cred because I think the standard lights were a little cherry red. Uh, other things I might do the diffuser between the exhaust. I'll just get a carbon one for that, and you know I've kind of de-chromed like the front end, like the side blades, and that's pretty much where it is at the moment. And I'm really, really you know, loving the car for what it is. Um, so yeah, I think from a mods point, I'm not thinking of running more power, I'm happy with the way it is. Um, you know, if anything, I might do a bit more carbon on the car, I don't know, but there we go. If there's any companies out there that are watching this vid and uh, are suppliers of carbon, hit me up and uh, let's get a discussion going there. So if you guys are in the market looking for a M3 and an M4 and you've got that kind of nervousness around, you know, the crank hub issue, do your due diligence make sure that you're buying a car that's been serviced like regularly um, and also you know you can before you even buy the car get it diagnosed you know get the computer plugged in to see what the condition of that crank hub is so there we go hopefully you've enjoyed this content I know there's a lot of waffling going on etc but I just thought I'd put that out there because it's an it's an issue that we all talk about you know people get bogged down into yeah you know my car's got like a complete engine failure etc all over like say the forums and the forums I know they're quite great you know there's a lot of like knowledge that you know gets shared around out there um, but there's also in negative light there's a lot of scaremongering that goes on and then there's companies out there that jump onto the sort of bandwagon and um, you know start profiteering out of it um, yet your car might be absolutely fine you know I'm not criticizing any companies out there they're doing a great job you know keeping cars alive and all of that but I just personally think that do your own due diligence before you go down that route and spend like money for no reason I will leave the rest of the crank up issue and your car etc in your own judgment but I just thought I'd put something like this out on my channel um, from my findings anyway um, so yeah if you found this video useful give it a like share subscribe to my channel keep the passion alive and uh, hopefully guys i'll see you on the next one take care bye